Hey, do you have a bonus question? Yes. How to handle interview rejections? Welcome back guys Arun the side and with another episode of Daily DBA show and in this episode again we have the same format but i am getting excited as we are progressing with the number of shows that we have done i can't believe like we have completed 36 episode and this would be i believe like the 37th daily dba episode awesome that being said let's start our episode with the first question of the day how can i set up primary database so that if i delete rows on primary the rows must not be deleted on standby do you think it is possible no it's not possible to do this see standby physical standby is like block to block copy of your primary database now if you want to achieve what you are saying you might have to use oracle golden gate or probably something else in order to achieve this but with physical standby setup the physical standby is exact copy of your primary database so whatever you do on primary it will be copied or replicated actually replication is the wrong term with physical standby so it will be exact copy of the primary database so i just can't say or i just can't recommend physical standby to achieve what you are saying so if you delete something on primary definitely it will be deleted on standby if it is physical standby but if you want to achieve it in a different way where if you delete something on primary it should not be deleted on standby then you might have to use golden gate or some other methods to achieve it all right that being said let's move on to the next question how can i generate a report of every sql statement executed by every session i guess it's not possible to do that until unless you have some kind of auditing enabled inside the database or you use tk prof utility in order to like you generate trace of every session you use the tk prof utility to read all those trace files and once you have those trace files you analyze all the sqls that are being run inside the database that is one method or the other method is you create triggers inside the database whenever the oracle or whenever there is some actions or some particular type of queries that are being ran on specific tables then you insert records into a log table that is one good method that is one simple method actually but i think i'll have a question to you like why do you want to generate a report something like this you can of course use awr report ash reports of course they will be available but those reports are specific towards the snapshot interval so in during that snapshot interval what happens inside the database what is the load of the database you can get those information also but again my question to you would be why do you want to generate such report i mean what's the requirement why do you need all the sql statements that are being ran inside the data i mean i don't see any reason for a client to see such report because most of the clients would be busy in database performance database backups some kind of auditing or the clients might be specific about some important tables inside the database like there is a sales table there is a finance table and on those tables if some specific queries are run let's take you delete one record from employee table those are some specific actions which your client might request you to capture those kind of queries so i i guess you will have to go back and negotiate with your client and ask like which tables are important inside the database and what actions on those tables you want to audit i think that will simplify your requirement because having a report of every sql ran inside the database serves no purpose and i don't think even your client might use that report to come up with some kind of data in order to i don't know what your client would do with that kind of data right that being said let's move on to the next question is oracle rdbms losing edge over no sql i mean see guys this is a debatable topic and why i say it is like you me sitting like this and i talk to hundreds of dbas and all dbas can say that okay you know what oracle is not going anywhere and there are other databases which are better than oracle I mean I listen to all those comments but understand this guys think from other perspectives also oracle was an 
I mean, Oracle is a market leader still. Oracle had been a market leader as a database vendor for so many years, right? So the revolution of database was started by Oracle Corporation. And of course, right now there are other databases which are famous in the market. I am using this term called famous, okay? So when I say famous, it doesn't mean that they have that big market share. There is a difference between famous and having the biggest market share. Oracle still holds 48% of the database market share. That means all the IT companies in the world, 48% of those companies are still using Oracle database. Very important term. So having the biggest market share is more important. Being famous is not important. I mean, according to me, okay? I don't, uh, I don't know on what scale you guys are gauging other databases, but at least for me, the market share is more important. Now, because Oracle is having the biggest market share compared to other database vendors, of course, Oracle will always be in demand. That is like one aspect of looking at this situation. The next aspect which I want to tell is people like I see so many DBS, they are saying like, oh, Oracle is going to uh, crash. Oracle is going down. I mean, I'm not against them, but what I want to say is don't you think the company owners don't know about all this? Don't you think Larry Ellison might not be thinking about all this? Don't you think the upper management of Oracle is not aware about their competition? Don't you think the Oracle is not working towards overtaking their competition? They are already. You, me sitting over here and we talk about like, oh, Oracle is crashing. Understand the upper management of Oracle is already having more data than what you and I have, right? So that being said, I believe like this is again a debatable topic and you have to be very careful. So many of you talk to me like saying like, oh, no SQL is gaining attraction. No SQL is famous. Okay. So who said Oracle is not having no SQL? Go check on Google. Oracle is also having no SQL database. Oracle is having IMDB in memory database. Oracle is having XML database. You talk Oracle has. Oracle already has. Why are you only comparing the RDBMS? Oracle also has no SQL. Go and check on Google, right? Oracle also has big data. Who said Oracle doesn't have big data? So the problem is like, uh, I believe like uh, not being aware of this stuff is also one of the biggest problem. Oracle has all different type of databases. So what you're doing is you are comparing NoSQL database with Oracle RDBMS database. No, Oracle also has other flavors of databases buddy all right so that being said i guess you get the idea oracle is much aware of its con competition oracle knows what has to be done so don't worry about it of course there are ups and downs with each companies and i guess oracle is also in that phase where it is now picking up once again by being aware of all the competition and other technologies that are emerging in the market that being said let's move on to the next question how can i reduce concurrency weight event. So guys, the concurrency weight event is caused because of more than one user logged into the database. Now see, you cannot avoid it because definitely Oracle database is meant to be used by multiple users, right? It's not possible. But if you have more number of users inside the database, then you will see a lot of concurrency weight events inside the Oracle database. So what I would recommend is try to check your application and reduce the number of user load onto the database. And one of the best way to do it, and I see like a lot of the DBAs are not using this method. The best way to do it is by implementing profiles inside the Oracle database. So what you do is you set up profiles for the application users. Now let's take if the application user is idle for three minutes, you disconnect the user from the database. So implement strict profiles inside the database and that is one best way of kind of like getting control on the number of users inside the database and guys i always recommend always have less than 200 sessions or users inside the database that is one good way of managing the database in one of the previous dbs episodes i mentioned that one one of our client was having more than 3000 
user sessions inside the database and that is heights of stupidity you are abusing the oracle database system and please don't do it all right now what happens when you reduce the number of users inside the database the beauty is the wait time will go down you won't see this wait event like frequently in your AWR reports the next is the response time will also go down because now you have few user sessions inside the database the query response time will like go down of course the database will respond faster actually right so whatever query is coming to the database oracle database will respond to you as fast as possible right so what i would recommend is in this kind of scenario reduce concurrent wait events what you do is try to use less number of oracle database sessions to do more that is one good idea and how to do it what to do it i think you need to sit with the application owner the database architect to reduce these kind of sessions inside the database i think my favorite one would be by implementing the profiles have strict profiles inside the oracle database and i think that will reduce the number of user sessions inside the database that being said let's move on to the next question can we create pdb from an existing pdb via db link of course it is possible to create a pdb from another pdb using db link i think it was made available in the latest release of 12c release 2 version and you can very well perform a pdb cloning via db links what i'll do is i'll put a link to the exact command which you can use to clone one pdb from another pdb using the db links and i'll put it somewhere below this video in the description that's all i had guys for this episode please send me your queries to support at dbagenesis.com and also comment below these videos try to share these videos with your fellow dba friends we need to get as many dbas as possible on this platform let's move on to the most exciting part and that is the bonus question wait where is our bonus question by the way hey do you have a bonus question yes how to handle interview rejections ah oh, awesome i i was not expecting this question okay by the way so guys uh, i think that's a great question thanks to our cameraman and uh, don't worry i'll introduce to our cameraman to all of you in our future episodes but meanwhile guys interview rejections is not like uh, i mean the best way to handle interview rejections let me help you all it has to do with your mindset okay so what happens is like in an interview when someone says that okay they are rejecting you it doesn't mean that they are rejecting your uh, qualifications your understanding or it doesn't mean that you don't know things it doesn't mean that you are not a good dba it doesn't mean that you don't know oracle it doesn't mean that you are not like a good dba honestly it only means that you are not a good fit for their project so what happens is sometimes the interviewer thinks that you might be a good fit in a different project which they don't have so always take it in a positive way so you might be uh, a good fit for a different company for a bigger company in a bigger project and right now where you have faced the rejection they don't have a project which might satisfy your skills right so and first of all guys as i always say interviews are like an interaction interview is not like uh, an interrogation so in an interview what happens is the interviewer is trying to see whether you are a good fit for the company and as a candidate you are trying to figure out whether the company is good fit for you right so it is like a, a fitting meeting i think that's a good way to put it right so you are trying to identify whether uh, each of the uh, like the company the employer and the employee are good fit for each other right i think i'll use this term fitting meeting very frequently so in this fitting meeting uh, like if the interviewer is telling you like oh you know what you are not selected at this time understand they are not rejecting your skills they are only saying that you are not fit for the project but your skills can be utilized in some big project somewhere in a big company right take it in a positive way don't get demotivated don't think that you don't know stuff or something the best way is what you do once you come back home 
always write down all the interview questions that you had and what you can do is you can try to figure out answers to those interview questions you can try to find answers to those questions you can prepare on those questions so that next time if someone uh, asks you the same questions you answer them in a good way all right that being said please don't get demotivated as i always say interview is not an interrogation interview is like a fitting meeting where you are identifying whether the employer is good fit for you and employer is identifying whether you are good fit for the project rejections happens okay by the way i never shared it right i was rejected by one company nine times and don't worry uh, there is no success story to it even 10th time they rejected me so i gave up on that but i have worked for some of the biggest mnc's in the world and i'm proud of that so i now feel that that company which was rejecting me for 9 or 10 odd times i think they were not good fit for me all right so it happens with everyone it happened with me it happens with i mean everyone across the globe so don't take it personally always think in a positive way saying like oh okay this company is not good uh, this company is not fit for me take it in a positive way all right that being said guys keep rocking don't let your motivations go down keep learning you have to go long way you have to learn lot of stuff and we all are here to build the biggest db community try to learn from this community try to learn from the comments below these videos try to learn from daily dba shows and also it is always not to share the knowledge that you are learning so keep sharing these videos with your dba friends bring along all dbas on this platform meanwhile i'll take a leave take care bye bye and i'll meet you all in the next episode bye